In today's True Crime and Tutorial Tuesday video, I'm talking about King William II whilst doing my makeup, so keep on watching to hear about his death and see me create this makeup look. William Rufus II, surviving son of William the Conqueror and Matilda of Flanders, was born about 1056. His mother gave birth to nine children, only seven of these survived. Little is known of William's childhood, and in 1087, William succeeds the throne on the death of his father, William I. He wasn't particularly liked as the king. On the 2nd of August, 1100, William went hunting in the New Forest, probably near Brockenhurst. As William galloped into the woods that afternoon, he must have looked the very model of a medieval king. Forty years old, the third son of William the Conqueror, he cut an imposing figure. It was late afternoon when William divided up his hunting party. Most of his courtiers remained with his younger brother Henry, while the king rode off with Walter Tyrell into the heart of the forest. What happened next remains something of a mystery, but the most famous version belongs to William of Malmesbury. The sun was now declining, he writes, when the king, drawing his bow and letting fly an arrow, slightly wounded a stag which passed before him, keenly gazing, followed it, still running a long time with his eyes, holding up his hand to keep off the power of the sun's rays. At this moment, Walter tried to transfix another stag, but, O oh, gracious God, unwillingly and without power to prevent it, he pierced the king's breast with a fatal arrow. Realising the extent of his mistake, Walter... Tyrell panicked, spurred his horse and fled. According to a French chronicler, he later turned up across the channel where he claimed that he had never been with the king at all that day. Many contemporary observers were sceptical that a first class marksman would have made such a terrible mistake. Some wondered whether Walter had been put up to it by the king's brother Henry, who was conveniently close by but not too close when it happened. But the truth is that we will never know. What we do know though is what happened next. When William's courtiers found the body, blood was still pouring from the wound and he was carried to Winchester in a car which left a trail of blood behind it. Speculation swirled as Walter was known to be an excellent shot. How could he miss the stag and kill the king? Was it an accident or a murder? There was no evidence of murder, but there was also nothing that confirmed an accident claimed the king's life. Was it possible that Walter innocently misfired his arrow and fled the country for fear of being accused of treason or murder? Did Walter assassinate William on Henry's orders? Henry benefited hugely from his brother's death. As an alternative option, riding and hunting accidents were common. Three members of the royal family had died in such accidents since 1070. Was the king number four in a series of unfortunate occurrences? Walter was pardoned and his son was allowed to keep his estates in England. Robert, Duke of Normandy, was returning from the First Crusade. If Henry acted quickly, he would be a king before Robert had even realised what had happened. With a handful of courtiers, he rode as fast as he could towards Winchester, intent on securing the royal treasury. Once he had the money, he reckoned everything else would follow. That night he reached Winchester. Three days later, he was crowned king at Westminster. No one reportedly saw the arrow that killed William. There is no real evidence that this was a deliberate act in a court of law today. You would never be able to convict beyond reasonable doubt, as most evidence is circumstantial. However, the unseemly haste of Henry in claiming the throne, the timing of when the only tender was away in the east. The dissatisfaction over the rule of William and the subsequent events and loyalties of key barons add up to a distinctly murky possibility that this was far more than a simple hunting accident. The Rufus Stone in the New Forest marks the spot where he is said to have been killed. The claim that this is the location of William's death appears to date no earlier than the 17th century when Charles II visited the forest. At that time, the most popular account of William's death involved the fatal arrow deflecting off a tree during Charles II's visit. He appears to have been shown the tree. The tree in question was cut down and burned during the 18th century and later in that century, the Rufus Stone was erected. In 1107, the tower in Winchester Cathedral situated near William's grave collapsed. His remains were blamed. Was this a signal that foul play had brought about his demise? His bones were relocated within the cathedral during Henry VIII's reign, seemingly without incident. In 1642, during the First English Civil War, the parliamentarians 
desecrated the graves of former English kings and queens buried in the cathedral and scattered their bones. These bones were later placed in mortuary chests, but they were unidentifiable. Since 2012, scientists have been trying to restore the 23 skeletons to the correct chests. And as far as I can tell, they've not had much luck with this. And so what do you think? Do you think this was an accident or do you think that there was more to it and that maybe it was something to do with Henry's involvement rather than just a general accident? Let me know in the comments below. So guys, that is everything I have for this case, everything for today's video. I hope you guys have all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one.